hot 2D girls, milkers, waking up and the first thing you see is this. All right, hopefully that caught your attention. Simping. Now, anyone who's diagnosed with the disease called I f***ing love 2D girls have simped at least once. Whether it be donating to a VTuber, having a whole album of your favorite big tittied waifu, or having your entire room filled with posters of an anime girl, or even having a body pillow that you would, from time to time, paint it in white. And our protagonist is no different, but he takes simping to a whole new level. For him, it's like a full-time job. And that's what this manga revolves around. This manga is called A Gal's Guide to Budget Living for an Otaku, and it's about this rich otaku boy who spreads his ass cheeks wide open and shits out an unlimited amount of money to throw it at his favorite voice actress, until one day, his family goes in debt. Now let's dive straight into this manga, like Johnny Sins diving into any kinds of jobs that he gets offered. Konguji Yutaka has an addiction, and he's addicted to things that some people might even say it's worse than gambling. He's addicted to gacha games and simping while getting a hard-on toward fictional 2D characters, something I just really can't relate to. His dad is a famous businessman who escaped the Matrix and installed the infinite money glitch onto him, so our boy is casually getting 200000 for monthly allowances. And just like every smart, brilliant 21st century man who has the brain power to only keep himself from drooling, he says, fuck it. Who needs to save money when you can blow it all away on hot 2D girls and cute voice actresses? Konguji is a diehard fan of a female voice actress called Konami Sakurako, and whenever he thinks of her, he just ends up ejaculating all over the place like he's a water hydrant. Now, just like Uncle Haven said, with great simping comes great responsibilities, since everyone around him just sees him as this piece of trash floating around the school's hallway. He came out of the room and hears the sound of his biggest threat of all time, real-life women. Hinata Reno is the popular girl in his class, and Konguji hates her for how loud and optimistic she always is. He sees her sitting on his desks, and now comes the second threat. He has to talk to her and asks her to move. Our boy walks up with full confidence with his chest popping up like an absolute alpha male. But as she turns around, he instantly folded like an origami. His lips are sealed as he sees how cute she looks, and her other friends got ready to step on him, but he lets her know that she's sitting on his desk. Hinata quickly got up and apologized, and before she leaves, she tells him that he don't gotta be so afraid of her, and asks him to be more of a straight shot with her. Kanguji got angry at her for looking down on him, and Hinata went on to talk to her classmates about things that most guys have little to zero clue of. It's something about nails and accessories. Her classmates comment that she must be pretty caked up. And no, I'm not talking about her cake down below. I'm talking about her wallet. Since she has so many accessories to change from day to day, Konguji realizes that their differences are too much. So there's no point in trying to close the gap between them. Class ends and Konguji receives a call from his dad. He picks up and asks how's the stock that he bought since he said that if it's a success, his allowance would go up. However, his dad sat him down and lets him know that they're currently in deeper shit than the room that most Redditors dwell in. He reveals that he has made a great mistake, and he's been played like a schmuck since he invested an ungodly amount of money into the bored ape NFTs and crypto coins. He also had just sold their family home. Our boy's face dropped and his dad continued to explain that their main source of income had hit a slump. Konguji then asks his dad, what about the desert island resort they bought from Mr. Beast? His dad reveals that no one is renting that place since there are too many snakes, and now his dad is hundreds of millions of yens in debt. The sky starts falling as the universe around our boy starts collapsing, and he realizes that he won't be able to simp for his favorite voice actress anymore. His dad then lets him know that for now, he's going to have to go into hiding for a while and hopefully the Yakuza won't find him and cut his dick off and sell it to pay for his debt. Our boy starts freaking out since a few hours ago he was still playing gacha games and now suddenly he's homeless. However, his dad lets him know that there's a villa where he and his mom used to live and he sends him the address. As for the living expenses, his dad expects him to be able to pay all that by himself since he's been receiving 200,000 yen every month and oh man, he could have not been more wrong. His dad starts having a mental breakdown and apologizes for everything and explains that he himself also don't know how to save his money and that's one of the reason why his mom walked out on him. He calls himself a failure 
and says good luck bro, peace out. Our boy is left in a state of shock since everything collapses on him so damn fast that for a second he thought that maybe his dad just wanted a reason to leave him. He checks his bank account and it's looking just like mine, but instead of worrying about himself, he starts freaking out since he won't be able to simp for Konami anymore. He arrived at the so-called villa and he starts losing it since when he heard villa, he thought it's going to look like some villa from Dubai, but this is clearly not the case. He starts yelling in anger and this startled a girl. The girl realizes it's Konguji from her class and he realizes that it's Hinata. Hinata asks him to help her carry her groceries into her house, which is at the same flat he's in. He walks in and Hinata reveals that it's her little sister and her name is Miko. Hinata thanks him for helping her and her hand touches Konguji's hand. Our boy instantly pulls his hand back like he's a pastor who had just came into physical contact with a succubus. He starts getting nervous and quickly runs into her bathroom to check if he actually just came from the physical touch of a woman. He starts twitching like he's being possessed, and he tries to calm himself down and remove any thoughts he has, since there's no way a gloomy guy like him can be with a cheerful girl like her. He turns on the water and tries to tell himself that he wouldn't like someone like Hinata, and suddenly Hinata busts down the door and tells him to not turn the faucet up so high. She then grabs his hand and tells him that a single pump of soap is enough, and she washes his and her hands together. And our boy damn near climaxed from this. Hinata explains to him that today's supermarket has some crazy good bargain deals, so she bought a bunch of stuff to save money, and he had to throw away all the soap and water down the drain. Konguji lets her know that she puts Saitama to shame with how much money she's saving on her life expenses. She starts blushing and turns away from him and she tells him to never mention this at school, about the fact that she's on that budget life and really enjoys a good bargain day. She then kicks him out, but Konguji reveals that he only lives right above her. Hinata gets shocked, since the room above is like a whole Disney castle by her standards. Konguji then explains his situation to her, and she says that sucks, but she's still jealous of him since she lives in a way smaller place and she's living with five people. She don't even got her own room. Suddenly, Konguji's alarm goes off, and he quickly realizes that today's the day of the reservation for Konami's Thanksgiving event. He quickly got it done and gets excited to see her at the venue. Then he snapped back to reality, oh, there goes gravity, and he realizes that he don't got money like that anymore. Hinata starts laughing since he's required to be pretty stacked to be an otaku. Our boy starts panicking, and he yells at Hinata, assuming that she probably thinks he's an idiot for wasting money simping when he doesn't even have enough money for himself which is true. But Hinata says that she doesn't think like that at all. Konguji gets surprised hearing this, and Hinata says it isn't wrong to spend money on something you like, since she does the same with her clothes and makeup. People on the internet also tells her all the time that it's a big waste of money to spend on something so little, but it makes her happy. And besides, she's using the money she earned by herself, whether it be from her ad revenues or part-time job. She tells him that it isn't about being an otaku or not. It's about spending money on what you like and managing them properly. Otherwise, you'll end up like most lottery winners. Konguji has finally been enlightened and realizes that the difference between him and her is that she's on that grind to make her money, while he himself is a spoiled brat who uses his dad's money. He then requests something from her. He gets on his knees and asks her to step on him while giving him a menacing, smug look. Oh, wait, never mind he didn't say that. He asks her to teach him how to save up money. Hinata gets surprised and thinks about it for a little, and she says, I gotcha fam, no worries, but she lets him know that she'll be hella strict. Suddenly, she pins him against the wall and asks if he wants to live together with her. She says that it's the ultimate guide to infinite saving money glitch if they live together and split their living expenses. Besides, she's always wanted to try rooming with someone. She got real close to him while breathing heavily and sweating, which caused our boy to pop a boner non like anything he's ever experienced before. He was as hard as a diamond. She then tells him that if she pay to rent a room, then he'll have enough money for his voice actress event. Konguji instantly agrees. The next morning, Hinata is waiting for him on a bike, and she says it's going to be about an hour bike to get to school. Our boy freaks out since he hates cardio. He wonders why can't they just take the train since it isn't that expensive, but Hinata says, Nah, fam! I did all the calculations, and she tells him that if he wants to spend money on taking the train, he might as well piss on his money and flush it down the bathroom instead. 
and she tells him to put on his big boy pants and wipe those little shit stains out of his ass cheeks, and she asks him, who's going to carry the boats and the logs? And as Kanguji looks at her, he found some fresh and world-changing motivation for himself. They start biking, and since our boy is right behind her, this gave him so much motivation for him to keep pedaling and following those juicy assets in front of him. However, it was a little difficult for him to bike when there's a stiff stick between his legs. She tells him to keep doing his best, and Kanguji realizes that she's cute. As they arrive home, Kanguji's knees are weak after all that, and he realizes it's a tough job to save money. Hinata then invites him into the apartment, but she lets him know that she'll be going back home at night so her parents don't think they're having some MMA match. She got close to him to make sure he's paying attention, and Kanguji panics. He doesn't want her to come so close to him since he didn't shower yesterday. But Hinata thinks he's annoyed of her because she keeps talking about saving money. Kanguji says that isn't the case, but Hinata will shake the answer out of him no matter what. And like a classic rom-com manga, they trip, and Hinata ends up falling on top of him. They got to their apartment, and Kanguji is finally getting to shower. He ended up using Hinata's shower, and more importantly, he's using it right after her. He uses the towel Hinata gave him, and realizes that it's kind of damp, and it also smells like Hinata. He then came to the realization that Hinata must have used this towel before lending it to him. Now personally, if that was me, I'd pick that shit up and hold it over my head and squeeze out all the water straight down into my throat. Hinata came into the bathroom after hearing him scream and confirms that it's her towel. And she teases him, assuming he had some unholy thoughts with her towel, and calls him a V-card holder. Kanguji didn't realize that Hinata was chill like that, since she just lets a guy use her towel so casually, but after leaving the bathroom, Hinata was blushing like crazy. The next morning, Kanguji finally leveled up and unlocked hot water in his apartment. Hinata saw this and realized that she don't need to lend him her shower anymore. They quickly got downstairs to head off to school, and Kanguji is super demotivated after seeing these bikes. These bikes to Kanguji are like grass to League of Legends players. However, a flash of bright, motivating light once again shines right in front of him, almost blinding our boy like it was a flashbang. Kanguji and Hinata are having a heated argument, and it all started an hour ago. Hinata is going live on some social media platform and is having a quick just-chatting session with her followers. Kanguji starts getting pissed because she's hella loud, and he realizes that there are too many goddamn simps in the world that's why someone as good-looking as Hinata would be super popular but he ain't complaining since he's getting to live with such a hot girl. Konguji then opens a song and starts singing his heart out like me in the shower, but Hinata quickly busts down the door and tells him to shut up, since her followers might hear him and they'll think it's her boyfriend. And more importantly, her followers' ears might start bleeding if they were to hear him sing. Konguji didn't let this slide and took it personally. So that's why they had an argument, and Hinata says she's going back to her home. At school, Kanguji feels like their distance has grown, so he plans to make up with her. But he wonders if she's going to be the same, even if they made up. He tries to convince himself that he don't need Hinata. However, when he got home, he's trying to cook up some Gordon Ramsay type of meal since he researched that good food might improve the relationship between two people. He puts on his chef's hat and started cooking, and it was straight heat. Literally. He finished and had a taste test. Then, Hinata came to his front door while questioning herself about how she should apologize to Kanguji. She opens the door and sees Kanguji on the ground. Realizing that he probably has a better chance at understanding rocket science than understanding how to make a good meal, Bro realizes he ain't built for this. Hinata wonders what's he doing, and he reveals that he wants to apologize to her. Her face lit up and she starts laughing. She then apologizes and suggests they both try to not be so loud since they live together. Hinata picks up the carrot's head and tells him to not throw away these things, since if he plants them, they can regrow into a carrot again. Basically, an infinite free food glitch. She reaches out her hand and asks him to continue cooking with her. She tied her hair up and wraps herself around Konguji, while showing him how to hold a knife properly. They finished making their meal, and after having a bite, Konguji's third eye opens up and he warps into the fourth dimension and transcends to a higher life form since the food is just so good. Hinata starts blushing, since no one has ever glazed her that much, not even her family, and since Konguji compliments her, she wants to cook for him every day. Our boy gets shocked and tells her that she really doesn't need to, 
She smiles at him and the two of them have made up with each other. Kanguji has now started working part-time with Hinata at a restaurant. However, customer service is his biggest fear. Our boy starts sweating buckets since he doesn't want to talk to lovey-dovey couples due to them being able to spread diabetes like wildfire. And he also don't want to talk to Andrew Tate's in leather vest jacket who looks like they run a meth lab in some shady alley. Hinata then gave him the perfect motivation he needed to push through. She bumps him with her ginormous mega milk blasters, blasting him with exceeding levels of confidence, making him work hard and get hard. Konguji walks past a table, and he sees an ungodly amount of Konami's merch, that you would think this customer is planning on opening a pop-up shop. He strikes up a conversation with the customer, and Hinata came in to stop him. It's their break time, and turns out the boss was not very happy with how friendly Konguji was toward the customer, but Hinata tells him to forget about it, and let's eat. Konguji looks at the menu and says that this place is super cheap, but Hinata says, hell nah fam, what you talking about cheap? Do I need to remind you about your dad's NFTs incident? Kanguji gets shocked and asks, Don't you always eat here when you're working? She says yes, but it's because she got the employee meal discount. Kanguji then realizes that this is his first time having lunch with a girl. But we all know he's lying because this is probably his first time having lunch with anybody in general. He starts sweating since from the outside it looks exactly like they're on a date. Their co-worker serves them the food and teasingly asks if they're dating. Hinata blushes and asks how did she know, then she says just kidding, but she says that they are living together so it does give off that kind of vibe. Hinata starts talking about random stuff and our boy is struggling to come up with things to say to her, and suddenly she asks if he has a girlfriend. <laughs> Konguji tries playing it cool and act all mysterious by saying he can't talk about that, that's classified information but he ain't fooling anybody, even a newborn would know he doesn't have a girlfriend. However, Hinata keeps digging deeper into this topic and floods his brain with question after question. And in the end, our boy folded and reveals that he's mega single and she can ask his right hand for proof. Hinata then reveals that she's also never been in a relationship and explains that she has never felt that spark with anyone. She then looks at Konguji and started blushing. Suddenly, she tells him that there's something she hasn't told him about. Konguji starts blushing, thinking today's his lucky day, but she reveals that there's also a family discount coupon. Konguji has never felt more let down in his life, and he yells at her and asks why is she blushing so hard about saving money. They finish their job, and Hinata asks how much did the manager pay him today. He opens up the envelope, and it's 4,000 yen, which is around $27. Hinata gets super excited over this. Meanwhile, Konguji fell into despair since he thought he was going to get paid with five Bugattis, two private jets, and a hundred million dollar mega mansion for working so hard at a restaurant. Then a note fell out of the envelope and it reads, Take it easy with the flirting, by their manager. The two starts blushing, and Hinata says he probably meant it as a joke. We then see Hinata trying on a variety of clothing, and One Hand Haven is now taking over this part. She's trying them on and deciding which one should she sell and which one should she keep. She went into Konguji's room to ask if he has anything he wants to sell, but Konguji is flooded with tears. He explains that Konami's first live concert always makes him cry. Hinata introduces him to an app that they can use to sell things, so she asks if there's anything he wants to sell. Konguji got a box full of stuff and wonders if anyone is even going to buy these, but Hinata tells him not to worry since when she was in her prime, she would go to the beach and collect pieces of stones and other kinds of scraps and sell them on this app, which made her around 1,200 yen, which is $8. She suggests he sell things that look useless, but turns out the useless ones cost the most. They started taking pictures of their product, and for the description, Hinata tells him to just be honest. So she wrote down the NFTs incident, and honestly, it sounds more like a GoFundMe description. Then they decide on the price. Konguji says he should sell it for 50000 since the original price was 100000 But Hinata says no can do, since the object looks kind of old, so she says 20000 would do. Konguji gets sad, but Hinata tells him not to worry, because it's definitely going to go lower than that. Because the business they're in, cheap things rule over everything. They hit post, and while waiting, Hinata runs off to get the things she also wants to sell. Konguji looks at her from behind and he starts acting up, because oh my, we're going to have to call in one hand Haven back on this one. He asks if her back is supposed to be showing like that. She asks if it's weird, because when she saw it online, she thought it was really cute. 
but after trying it on, it wasn't all that, and since he thinks the same, she's going to remove it. She then got into various kinds of clothing while asking for Kanguji's opinions on each one, and oh man, we gotta stay strong here, guys. However, this was also really hard for Kanguji, since his mind wasn't thinking straight, but instead something else was really straight. Hinata got into the last one and asks for his opinion, but she realizes that it's a bit tight, since the clothes isn't able to handle how stacked her assets are. She starts blushing and says she's going to sell this one. However, Kanguji says this is his favorite because it isn't as revealing as her other clothes. She gets surprised hearing this and then says she's going to keep this one. Suddenly, Kanguji's phone receives a notification. Turns out someone already wants to buy the cat. However, they're asking it for 15,000. But Hinata says if you do some simple math here, 15,000 is more than zero, so he should do it. They made the sale, and Hinata grabs onto his hand and tells him to appreciate this moment. She jumps around in excitement, and perhaps she was too excited that it caused her clothes to rip apart, revealing some nice cheetah patterns underneath. She blushes and yells for him to not look at her, and she tells him that if he don't forget what he saw today, she's going to take all his earnings. Konguji is sleeping, and he's woken up by Hinata sitting on top of him. She starts blushing even harder and asks for him to please put it in. Our boy quickly gets out of that ungodly situation and runs off, but Hinata says she can do it for him so he can start. Turns out what she meant is for him to put his information into an app where he can collect points and turn them into discount coupons. Now this app just gave me a flashback to the dark days when I used to look up how to hack gems on Clash of Clans, and they would tell me to download a bunch of apps to gain points and trade them for gems. But I'm pretty sure the only thing I'm trading was my private information for some viruses and spits to remind me that there's no such thing as free gems. Kanguji says he doesn't trust these kinds of apps, but she got close to his ears and tells him to put it in. However, Kanguji was as stiff as a boulder, both the one below and his entire body, since he isn't shaken by this. But Hinata says, then she'll make him do it, and with the size difference, our boy was not winning this. In the end, Kanguji got the app. He then receives a message from Hinata, and she explains how the app works. Now there's a bunch of texts here which easily summarizes to, it should have been me, not him. When will this ever happen to me? And when will I ever get a girlfriend because I'm fucking single as fuck? She then tells him that the friend referral bonus is really good since he gets 500 points when a friend registers with his link or something like that. Suddenly, Kanguji got real optimistic since there's more Konami's merch that he wants to buy. Now the problem is, he needs friends to complete this task. Now this was like asking Twitter users to use their brains. But he kept trying until he went to the two girls that are friends with Hinata. Hinata saw this, and she sees her friends laughing at Konguji. They then bring Hinata into the conversation and continued laughing at Konguji for trying to save money. Hell yeah! Boo! Imagine trying to save money. That is probably the most ridiculous thing I've heard all my life. Hinata says it's fine though because you can manage your money better. But her friends call this a loser behavior because no smart human being on this planet Earth would want to save money. Kanguji sits in pain since no one actually joined. Then Hinata walks up to him and sits beside him. She apologizes for dragging him into all this since he don't really like this saving thing anyway. Kanguji tells her to stop yapping and quickly get to the point. She then asks if she's cute. Kanguji says yeah, and she explains that since she's cute and popular, she has to hide her frugal self. And she realizes that her frugal self isn't very cute, and she says it's kind of complicated. However, Kanguji tells her that there's nothing wrong with that, and reveals that before he used to hate popular types like her. But after getting to know the real her, that's what makes him think she's cute. She starts blushing, and Kanguji yells that it's no big deal. She laughs and suggests they continue doing their best to save their points. Kanguji calls her a frugal nut, and Hinata says she isn't stingy about everything, though. For someone she likes, she's not stingy about her feelings for them. And Hinata smiles at him. She then grabs his hand and drags him to her friends. And somehow, someway, they're now friends and they convinced them to register for the app. The next day, someone rings the doorbell at Konguji's place. He opens the door and it's a girl standing in front of him. She says she's here for him since they're going to get married. Now, since we've reached 50K, the grippers are revealing. So if you do not want to see this, that's your warning. Also, disclaimer.
These grippers have been trained for over decades. It's been used to climb mountains, walk on water, and pick up dirty clothes from the floor, and it's reached its peaked physique, plus with some godly given genetics. So after seeing these, you guys might look at your own feet and feel bad about it. So I'm just letting you guys know that in advance. Now hopefully you guys didn't fall out of your chair after seeing this, but that's what peak performance feet looks like.